All right. So after, I think it was early this week. Was it early this week or roughly around the weekend? Okay, I posted a poll. Okay, regarding which of the two topics, because these are the two topics that I feel like really uh, are good to share at the start of the year, since these are two topics that I'm really, really well proficient in. Particularly those two, which are swing trading as well as charting and structure. I really wanted to do the, the second one, which is um, doing charting and structure. Okay, um, so anyway, ang nanalo sa botohan is uh, swing trading. So this is uh, our topic and the stuff that we will be discussing tonight. So I hope you guys are ready. Okay, same as, uh, same as me. So let us start. Before we go through the topic of swing trading, which is our main topic for the evening, I want to discuss one very important thing. Okay, we have a side topic that we will be discussing before we get into the main part. So, kumaga para appetizer. All right. So, one of the things that um, I realized last year was, you know, the power of goals, setting goals. Okay, we'll talk about goals first. Uh, setting goals is the first step, according to Tony Robbins, in turning the invisible into visible. One of the things that really stood out for me when I was starting out in trading, as some of you might know or for some of you who don't know, I started out, um, started trading when I was 17 years old. Kaagalan ko lang sa um, pag-networking noon, pagbibenta ng mga sabon, mga kape, mga chuchu-chuchu. Tapos uh, may apply na ko na nag-trade uh, sa market and I also got interested through Bo Sanchez. Okay, that was roughly around 6 years ago, roughly around 2012. Wala pa akong brokerage account noon. Uh, I was 17 years old. That's when I got into attending my first uh, co-financial seminar and that's pretty much when I started. Okay, um, after that, something kind of... Kasi back, back before I got into the market, Okay, my goal was just, you know, to get rich. Okay, uh, obviously, um, fi coming from a family that isn't really that well off financially, who doesn't like to be in a position where you'll be financially rich or, you know, be able to be financially flexible to uh, hit your goals. So, kaya nga ako nag-networking eh, nung bata ako, hindi na ako nag-college. But, um, after I got into the market, I saw you know, a possibility that was much better. I'm not putting down people who are doing networking, but um, I saw something that could make a change for me. Um, and I knew that it might take a while, but when I got into, the tra into trading, one of the things that I started out with was I created myself. I put up my, for myself a goal. I told myself, I was 17 years old at that time. I told myself that I'll be I'll be opening my first brokerage account at the age of 18, okay? Um, and that's what I did. Automatically, when I got my first job, okay, uh, I applied in December, kaka, 18 years old ko pa lang. Um, one of the first few things that I got, okay, um, roughly around first or second paycheck ko was to open a co uh, no, not co not a first metro sec account. And that's what I did. Okay, so that pretty much turned the initial dream into a reality. And from there, okay, I decided to tell myself that, you know, I will be saving an insane amount of money so that I could fund my dream or I could fund my goal. Okay, um, back in 2012, 2013, there really wasn't much. Um, compared to now, there's not that many traders to follow uh, back in the day. But there were, okay, there's Ichimoku, there's Z Freaks, Kapitan Kidlat was already out roughly around, um, roughly around 2013. Um, and there were a couple of traders like Spy Frat who I was following at the time. Um, so, kumbaga, the goal, okay, as I keep on pushing towards it, because it was clear to me, okay, I wanted to do this. It was clear to me. The mac what was clear to me was the macro side of it, okay, and what really made it true or what really backed up you know my goal of okay, I want to hit my first million, okay, I want to stop working at whatever job I, which I was in which i was at the time I was working night shift in a bPO company um 
what made that real was the small things okay the small things small goals that i had that backed up those big goals the micro goals um for me the micro goals were really important because it was stitched up really really tightly or really well into making my big goals a reality micro goals a couple of them would be to save okay one of the things that i really started out when i was you know first one to two years of trading although i wouldn't say i am already have a system sabog pa ako mag trade no and i didn't have a trading journal i didn't have a uh, i didn't I'm not doing any trading plans. I pretty much was just scouring through Facebook or looking for stock tips in my first one to two years in trading. But one of the first micro goals that I've had was to regularly save. Okay, automatic roughly around, I was single, you know, I was young. So roughly around 30 to 40% of my salary goes into my portfolio. It was a bit aggressive, obviously. Uh, for some people who have families, who have people that they need to feed, or you know expenses that I have to consider it's a bit you know too much okay 30 40% tapapo that's a portfolio mo but that was me okay that was my goal so i skipped a lot of things mga inuman okay um dates you know doing milk teas starbucks and all that shit i kind of put it aside so that i could hit my micro goal which was to save regularly roughly around 30 to 40% of my paycheck of my sahod automatically goes into my uh, portfolio so that kind of okay um, backed up my goals in terms of the macro now eventually okay what I realized was goals are cool you know it kind of puts you in a spot where you have a direction to follow but what really counts what really makes all of these things stitched up and come through our plans okay one of the things that i realized when uh you know a few years into full-time trading and consistent profitability was i lost too much of things that are important to me okay and this is one of the things that i'm stressing out not just with my students but um for everyone that i'm encountering in trading wag niyong papalitan yung mga importanteng bagay sa buhay nyo para may maipasok kayo na importante din. Meaning, if you see trading as something important, okay, it's a macro goal that you have to fit in. Do not, okay, do not replace important things such as health, such as family time, such as, you know, the time that you should be spending um, doing th other things that you love and are true and most dear to you. One of the things that I have been noticing with a lot of starting traders was pretty much the same to what happened to me. You know, I was all bent up over the past three, four, five years, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16, when I, when I was working in prop, it was all trading. Everything else was kumbaga, background noise, okay? It was all trading. Pagising sa I was already flipping to Twitter, you know, reading through tweets of uh, some traders who are trading in the U.S. market. Uh, I was already looking roughly around uh, the morning. I was looking if Charles Lim has already tweeted a couple of things regarding uh, his, his perspective, his outlook on the market, uh, and, uh, and other traders who are trading locally. So, pumbaga, my entire life was revolving around that. And... Because of that, okay, it kind of ha I kind of had setbacks on a lot of things. You know, family time, health, number one. Okay, for those of you who don't know, uh, um, I really have issues with sleep. Thankfully, this last year, okay, I was able to see a doctor and I was able to patch things up. But there were times, 2017, early 2018, na dalawang araw, straight, wala akong tulog, nagagawa ko. Because I really had issues with sleep okay i wasn't taking care of myself enough okay i've gained weight I've, I've i've been through a lot of things that you know i i put aside because trading it important trading it. but there are other things that are more important in life and one of the things that i always say to everybody is if you have something important that you want to bring in your life okay do not take away the other important things that you already have your health your family your family time things that matter to you so that you could bring it into your life. 
Okay, what you should be taking away are the numerous amounts of time that you are spending on things that are actually not important. In reality, if you take a look at it, okay, we have an insane amount of time. Sure, for the people who are working, you know, you guys have work, you guys do travel time, but in between, I'm sure you could squeeze one to two hours in Facebook, probably two to three hours in Netflix, doing YouTube, going through memes, not saying that's wrong, but that's an excess amount of time that you could probably set aside so that you could bring another more important thing, which, you know, um, back in the day, I hope na dapat or sana ginawa ako, which obviously I didn't, and now I'm trying to patch things up. So I hope, you know, that you guys, wala eh, walang nag-aalaga, sir. Eh. So, meron naman, kaso, may, nag- may, nag- may nag-aalaga, kaso, Diba? Masyado eh. Masyado tayo nag-focus sa trading. Okay? <laughs> There's more to life. Okay? Than trading. So, there is that. So, guys, uh, goals are important. You know, for those of you who still did not start this year, 2019, without a goal, okay, it's good to shape out a goal. Okay? Shape out things that you want to achieve because without a goal you obviously would be going nowhere okay sure you know you would have emotional or motivational outbursts wherein you would be heading towards a certain direction like you know you'll open your first brokerage account or I'll start having a trading journal or uh, I'll be putting up trading plans now whenever I trade but it has to be clear okay one of the things that really works best i believe for most people and myself included is having a board okay where you have or your goals on the long term and the short term are very 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 much visible to you as well as the plans that would stitch up and make those things possible you know a small whiteboard would do okay just 300 400 pesos you could buy that at any bookstore anywhere just put up your goals in there okay look at it take a good look at it at the start of the day while you're having coffee or habang nagbibiyes ka before on your way to work it really makes sense okay it really puts things into proper perspective so there's that but yes our main topic for tonight is this okay swing trading okay so buti no may mga nakarealize na Oh, um, although I'm, 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 I just turned 24 last December, but I don't believe age is that much of an issue. What matters is the time that we have, so you know it's good to take that okay into consideration. All right, so this is our main topic for the evening: swing trading. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, okay, a lot of things about charting, risk management, etc. But the two things that really stood out last year was what string trading was really all about as well as how do I chart, how do I look at market structure. We'll do that another day since the union yung nanalo sa polls. Pero tonight, we will be looking into swing trading. Now, one of the things that a lot of traders when they're starting out, one of the things that isn't clear to them is the clear distinction or pagkakaiba, okay, the difference between swing trade or the trading type such as position trading or trend following, day trading or scalping, momentum or swing trading. These trading types are different from the way you execute your trades. Your specific strategies, such as buying breakouts, reversals, or bounces, are totally different from a trading style. A trading style is a specific style of trading okay, that embodies the way that you trade. Kumbaga, ito yung, uh, kumbaga, ito yung uh, genre mo. Kunyari, uh, uh, musician ka, kunyari, gitarista ka, okay? Or you sing, your trading style is your genre. It's what sets the tone for everything. Okay, and with regards to swing trading, before we head down to that, it's important that we understand that when it comes to trading styles, one of the things that determine our trading style is our goals. Okay, your goals determine your trading style. Okay, typically, all right, it's just three. All right, long term, 
trades which usually span around months sometimes it even goes for a year okay i've seen traders who hold trades for roughly more than a year a year and two or three months roughly around those uh lines uh and there's the intermediate okay uh wherein your trades span around a few weeks like one two weeks three weeks okay matagal na isang buwan okay and short term okay okay I, I, lately i've been seeing that a lot of people are more focused on short term trading but there are actually various trading styles that cater to various trading goals so sa ragnarok ba ako natuto ng economics hindi eh Okay, it's by following, <laughs> following and following and stalking and stalking and stalking and stalking a lot of good traders in fa- uh, in Twitter in the community, which I'm very very thankful of. But yes, uh, yes, your goals okay determine your trading style. Your trading style isn't determined by what whatever you feel like, whatever you feel like is most profitable to you. Like you've seen a trader, oh he's doing momentum trading. Yan yung ko mas mas ano eh, mas kikita ako dyan, eh. Okay, or may nakita ka, you know, someone did uh, a really quick day trade, you know, b- bought off a bounce, so that a resistance, he made an 8% profit in just uh, 10 minutes. Okay, or you saw someone, um, he bought a retest of a certain stock, like say, a PIP or Felix, and then um, he made money in just a very short period of time. Binili nga nung tanghali, nabenta nga nung market close. Okay. So, really, when it comes down to it, your trading style is very closely related or pretty much is determined by your goals. And if we take a look at various trading styles, okay, these are what I know. For me, these are just the six uh, that I know so far, okay. There's position trading and trend follow trading, which is very, very, very famous, okay, particularly trend follow trading, okay. And then there's okay. Um, and then there's swing trading, okay, which we will be discussing tonight, as well as momentum trading. And there's scalping and uh, day trading. Now, if you take a good look at it, I've lined them up in such a way that they fall into the um, time periods for certain trades. Day trades, let's start off with short-term trades. Day trades and scalping, okay, or day trading and scalping. Day trading is much more, I'd say, longer than scalps. Scalps, especially if you see professional traders do scalping, um, it really is high volume, okay, high-frequency trading and scalping. It um, sometimes takes six seconds, matagal na usually minutes. Um, usually high volatility, huge range markets. Okay, or huge range um, stocks that they could uh, focus on when they could take lots of trades with where they have an edge. So that's how scalping usually works. Okay, day trading, on the other hand, is pretty much momentum swing trading. Okay, these two things um, being stitched up on a daily basis on an intraday time frame. So these two things, scalping and day trading, are exclusively okay, short term. Okay, you can't. Say na you're a day trader, pero you hold your trades for more than two days or more than two weeks. Okay, day traders usually just trade intraday. Similarly, for scalpers, that's pretty much their zone. Now, momentum and swing trading, okay, uh, which I'll be clearly lining out the distinction with or explaining the difference between the two of them later. Okay, falls between the two of these. Okay, sometimes when you do swing trades or momentum trades. You could do them in just a few days, like uh, two or three days. Okay, you buy off uh, an area of support. Okay, and then the market rallies. You sell at an area of resistance. Okay, so that's you know uh, a two or three day swing. Okay, uh, stock has reversed on the third or fourth day. You, you get to sell. So sometimes swing trades take a few days. Similarly for momentum trading. All right, say so you got into a really nice juicy breakout. Stock is on momentum. Okay, uh, it did a nice all time high or a huge uh, breakout of a range there's momentum already picking up okay and then the mark uh, the stock rallies one two three days and then you get to sell all right after a couple of days sometimes momentum lasts for more than a week sometimes it takes one week okay 
want to I don't know if momentum trainers I don't know if you guys since I'm predominantly focused on swing trading I don't know if you guys have uh, had trades that go more than two weeks but I, I typically see on an average roughly one week and a half roughly around those figures okay Mom that's momentum trading swing trading also could take a couple of weeks depending on how you see the swing say you got into a really nice swing low of a blue chip stock okay and the level that you are seeing where you could get out of a trade is roughly based on the volatility that you're seeing would roughly take you know it would take the stock you know one week okay two weeks it depends on how the market reacts but sometimes there are swing trades that take one week two weeks stuff like that okay so there's that and then there is trend follow and position trading trend follow you cannot tf okay intraday ni pwedeng bumili ka ng umaga binenta mo agad no uh, no happen although the dynamics of trend following you using a trail stop that could work day trading okay the strategy that i was using uh, when i was working in prop was very similar to tf you know you, you ride the trend wait for the trend to break intraday um pero the trend follow that we know or that is most commonly known typically falls in the long term and intermediate time frame of trades meaning the tf usually you know takes a three two three four weeks okay or you know most commonly it would take you know one month of hold someone mahawakan two months so there's that and obviously the last one is position trading uh i will not go on to um uh differentiate okay yung position trading sa tf um they're very similar okay pero position trading um is exclusively long term okay um, some people might make or make the distinction that they're the same, but they're for me. In my, the way I see it, they're totally different. Position trading, the way I see it, is you taking a position with an idea or with the trading objective of actually holding the trade for months. Okay, like say you get into a really nice consolidation. Okay, you think that that's a really good area of value. Okay, it would take a while, but you know with the amount of liquidity present, you would be able to. Uh, get the amount of allocation that is better suited for you. Um, position trading is predominantly um, um, used by a lot of fund managers, people with huge capital. Since um, as much as we want to, particularly sa PSE, there's not that much liquidity available. All, always, uh, always. There would be from time to time, but there's not that much money or liquidity available where you know you could trade 10 million off the bat and do a day trade with it sometimes it works sometimes it's sometimes uh it's possible but for the most part for huge money okay you need to take time okay time would have to be sacrificed so that you could get uh into position trading uh but that's not our topic for tonight so as you can see okay each particular trading style has its own uh, variation, okay? Different, okay, timetables for trades, okay? If you actually, if we go deeper into this, you would realize na day traders, they have their advantages. Kung maga meron yung pros, meron cons. Trend follow traders, they have their pros, they have their cons. They're good at certain things, they're bad at certain things. Momentum swing traders, they're good at certain things, they're bad at certain things. So there's no 100% specific style of trading that is the best. Okay, a lot of traders would tell you, ah, oh, my system is the best. Okay, look at all my watches, look at all these fancy cars behind me. Okay, I'm one of the best traders, I'm using the best system. Typically, that's bullshit. So, because in reality, if you take a good look at it, each particular trading style has its own pros and cons. It would be superior during certain market periods. During bull markets, trend follow traders, momentum traders are all around good. Swing trading all around during bear and bull, uh, bull markets would thrive. Day traders, uh, depending on the amount of volatility and liquidity, um, would have a hard time during bear markets. Bull markets, obviously, uh, day traders would excel. All right, so each of these uh, trading styles has their own pros and cons. But tonight, what we'll be focusing on is 
swing trading. And swing trading falls on these two time frames. Short term trades, typically just a couple of days, just a few days, as well as you know, a couple of weeks. Okay, to make a distinction, okay, magkaiba, guys, magkaiba mo magkaiba yung swing trading sa momentum trading. For those of you who have noticed, these are Ragnarok characters. I used to play Ragnarok. <coughs> Sorry. I used to play Ragnarok a lot uh, when I was young. Lately, nung lumabas yung mobile, lalaroin ko sana kaso nakakasira talaga ng buhay. Hindi na applicable. As much as I loved and... Uh, Oh, as much as I love and um, like the game, it's not okay. Um, that worthy of my time, okay, um, for me to spend four, five, six hours playing uh, every day. So binigay ko na lang account ko, okay, sa mas may hilig at mas may mas ma, at mas may uh, may allocate na oras sa Ragnarok. Pero ako wala na. Quit Ragnarok na tayo. Okay, since we have other priorities that we need to focus on. Anyway, going back, swing trading, guys, is completely different from momentum trading. Okay, similarly, if, if we use characters, okay, uh, in Ragnarok, kumbaga swing traders, these are archers, these are snipers. Momentum traders, these are one-shot killers. These are guys or these are traders who get in momentum, get out when there's momentum, kumbaga hit and run. Okay, parang ano to yung mga mga riding in tandem boys, yung mga momentum trading kasi mabilisan ang action. Okay. Same trading similarly has fast action as well, but the dynamics are dif- dif- totally different. Okay. Trend follow sa minutes. Pwede naman sir, the dynamics of TF could be used <laughs> day trading, pero trend follow that we know is different. Okay. So as a distinction, just to point things out, okay, momentum trading typically focus on periods wherein momentum is strong. Okay, obviously you don't want to go into a trade when the momentum is strong. Sa downside, you want to get if you're a momentum trader, you want to get in at periods when wherein momentum is strong in the upside. Walang shorting sa Pilipinas. Okay, if you're a regular retail trader, you cannot short. So, the only way wherein you can profit is to go long. Okay, and for momentum traders, trading the PSC. <coughs> sa love ba hit and run ako? Hindi ah. Hindi. Ano tayo? Uh, faithful, loyal. Okay. Uh, marupok. Okay. So, momentum traders usually focus on, obviously, breakouts. Okay, so breakouts, kumbaga, in terms of the setups, is the f- main dish and focus of momentum traders because obviously breakouts are the periods where in times or times where the momentum shifts towards the upside and that's where momentum traders typically do want to get in on the action okay next is obviously our topic for tonight which is swing trading swing trading is all about getting into um, swings okay obviously hindi tayo pwede pump. there's only two types of swings swing highs and swing lows okay or, or um, swings okay like this uh, if you take a look at this move right here this is a move that came from a swing high then swung to a swing low swing high to swing low okay typically swing trading since wala namang shorting sa Pilipinas hindi ka pwede mag trade ng swing high papuntang swing low the only time that um, you could work things out as a swing trader is to get in at swing lows, okay, and get out at swing highs, okay. So that's pretty much the realm of swing trading. Bounces, reversals, those two setups are for swing traders. Bounces and reversals, and typically it involves buying at areas of support. Okay, getting into an area where the market would be swinging, creating a swing low, and riding the trend, and selling at a swing high. Okay, so in reality, the main difference is swing traders, we buy low and we sell high. We buy at support and we sell at resistance. Momentum traders, they do a different thing. They buy high and they sell higher. They buy at breaks of resistance and they sell at the next area of uh, resistance 
Okay, a swing, how do I define a swing? Well, basically, a swing is a move from a swing point to another. An area where the stock has reversed its direction towards the opposite direction. Parang gulo. An area where the stock, okay, trending towards a certain um, direction completely reverses. Okay, so that's a swing point. Okay, and the next swing point would be where it reverses. Markets, stocks, zigzag. Okay, there's always this uh, movement from an area of support to another area of support, from another area of support to another area of resistance, from another area of resistance towards another area of resistance, from an area of resistance towards another area of support. So that's a swing. So pretty much that's the definition. Okay. Swing traders, we get in when the mark, uh, when the stock is low. We buy at lows, we sell at the highs. We buy at support, we sell at resistance. Momentum traders, buy at resistance, sell at the next area of resistance, or at higher areas of resistance. So that's pretty much the difference between both. Pwede rin pong po ban tawaging may specialty sa swing trading as swingler. Hindi ko alam. Okay, anyway... So, with swing trading, it's all about buying low, selling high. Meaning, your entries happen at the lows. Okay, your entries, yung um, mga entries that we use, um, it happens at areas of support. And our exits happen at areas of resistance. Okay, buy and support, sell and resistance. Classic swing trading. Okay, if you buy and support, you sold that resistance, that's it. You're, you did the swing trade. All right. You buy low, you sold high. Okay, your entry would be at support, at lows. Your exit would be at the highs. So there is that. Buy high, sell low. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> All right. So yes, breakout plays typically are the realm of uh, momentum traders. Okay, bounces. Okay, bounce plays. Mga reversal plays. Yan, mga bottom fishers, okay, mga uh, nagbo-bottom peak, okay, yan ang uh, realm, okay, or um, that's the realm of uh, swing traders. So, magkaiba, again, ha? swing trading and momentum trading. So, this is it, pretty much, okay, for swing trading, you buy at support, you sell at resistance. Now, let's take a look at, there's three ways, okay, to swing trade. For me, there's just three, okay, obviously, when it comes to trend classification, there's only three. There's stocks that are moving in a downtrend, there's stocks that are moving on an uptrend, and there are stocks that are trading sideways. For stocks first, let's take a look at stocks that are trading sideways. Swing trade in a range is very straightforward. You trade the range. Okay, you buy on support, you sell on resistance. You buy on support, you sell on resistance. You identify the area of support within the range and you sell at resistance. Pwede ba na swing trader ka lang mag-focus or need din ba pag-aralan yung system ng ibang style ng trading? Kung marami kang oras, sir, okay, then go ahead. You can study a lot. Pero if you're starting out, your focus is of crucial importance. <coughs> the amount of time that you spend, okay, especially in your starting out, is, when you're starting out, is crucial. If you focus on a lot of things, genius ka nga, but your execution could probably be off because to develop mastery you will be needing focus you will be needing experience okay kumbaga sa Ragnarok mayroon tayong mga attributes may mga stats okay you have strength you have agility you have intelligence you have luck you have dexterity if you focus if you focus on strength all alone okay that's a particular style or class Pero pag in-spread mo yan lahat, 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 pinagpapapansin mo, binigyan mo ng points lahat, sabog yung character mo. Okay? When it comes to battle, mahina ka. Because you are not strong at a certain particular way. Similarly, when it comes to trading, you need to have a focus. Okay? Anong trading style ginagamit ko currently? I focus on swing and day trading a lot. Okay, so swing trading sa mga intraday trades ang uh, move natin. Yung mga quick 30-minute trades, one-hour trades, or swing trades that last a couple of days or 
maximum okay um i only had one swing trade that went to more than two weeks usually um it's just you know two weeks personally i focus on swing trading and day trading all right so there's that so for a range okay whenever you get into a range trade okay in a swing trade in a range sorry it's all about buying on support setting up resistance but one thing that you guys need to note for um swing trades in a range is importante yung laki yung laki yung um teka baka baka may mag-comment na naman ng ano eh ng kakaiba or bastos eh yung yung lapad okay <laughs> yung lapad o yung lawak ng range is important the range the size of the range is important okay kasi okay it's obvious pag yung difference between the area of support up to the area of resistance is just 3%. Okay, minus commissions, magkano lang kikitain mo? Okay? You'd be, sorry for the term, you'd be an idiot to get in on a range that is very, very tight. Okay? Obviously, there's not that much reward for you there. Okay, typically, there are, within, if you're a swing trader and you're trading in a range, there are swing trades wherein you could get in on a right, really nice range that is more than 5%, 7%. There are ranges that are um, that are big in a way that um, it's roughly the size between, the difference between the support and resistance is 8%, 9%. Okay, so... Um, yun, medyo maganda-ganda yung reward kasi you obviously have to take into consideration your costs. Okay? You obviously have to take into consideration the amount of risk that you're taking. Is the risk that I'm taking... Kunyari, I'll be risking, kunyari, I'll be allocating 30% of my portfolio. I'll be buying at an area of support. Okay, I will probably be losing 2% or 1% of my account pag na-stop out ako sa trade na to. Pero ang tanong, magkano bang kikitain ko pag nakapagbenta ako sa resistance? Okay, the range is important. The size, okay, of the range matters. Okay. And another variable that you always need to consider whenever you're doing swing trades in a range is the amount of volatility. Now, volatility is pretty much the size of the candles. How fast okay, um, could, pr could price move toward a certain direction? It's a topic for another day, but volatility is important. Because low volatility ranges or yung mga ranges na po siya ang tagal, aabutin ng... Uh, buwan buwan bago makapunta from one area of support to another area of resistance typically alanganin di ba so okay so volatility is also important how fast typically okay would the stock move within the range from an area of support to an area of resistance okay okay shout out kay sir Yuri from uh, from Cebu hello sir um, kita kits baka magana tayo mag uh, sinulog moves okay in a couple of weeks so tama si sir serious no um mga tapon trades uh, naalala ko sa talk ni sir serious lino sa um um R um anong talk ba yun? RTC o oh, sa RTC um uh, event ng uh, trader development and kidlat nights no nag talk si sir serious li doon sabi ni sir serious li sa mga Factors na hinahanap niya is momentum as well as volatility. Volatility is important. Kasi pag, di ba, uh, bariya-bariya, ang lilit ng mga kandila, o, anong petsa na bago umabot sa, kung nakabili ka sa support, anong petsa, di ba, bago makaabot sa resistance. Opportunity cost is important as a trader. So, um, volatility always should be considered. Okay, so yung amount of time, roughly, okay, that it would take between, um, the movement from an area of support to resistance is very, very important. What is the effective time frame for swing trades? Um, when it comes to time frames, magkakaiba kasi. There's, um, there's the time frame wherein you look at the trade. There's the time frame wherein you execute the trade. Typically, the way I do it, I focus on the daily a lot. For perspective, I use weekly. Um, execution, yes, I do intraday, hourly and 15 minutes. Hourly predominantly for my swing trades. All right, so there's that. So yes, two things again that are important for swing trading in a range. Okay. Two things that are important. Number 1, the size of the range. Size na lang ha, size. Okay, hindi na yung width, um, kapal, laki, 
size na lang. Dami kasi synonym ng size. Anyway, the size of the range is important whenever you're doing a buy and support and selling assistance, doing a swing trade within a range. Okay, you want to have decent reward that is kumbaga enough. Okay? in compensation to the amount of risk that you're taking. If you're risking 2% and you roughly would be making 1.5%, so alanganin ka. Not unless you have a really really high hit rate or uh, you have you have you already have an edge there. You've been trading that for uh, I don't know more than 50 times already and ang hit rate mo is more than 70-80% then sure by all means go ahead. But if your hit rate is anywhere between, you know, 30 to 50, 60%. Okay, you want to make sure that the reward that you are getting when you take a trade is enough. So, number one, when you're buying in a range, when you're doing a swing trade in a range, the size of the range is very, very important. Number two, the amount of time. Okay, yung tagal ng movement from an area of support to an area of resistance, that's equally important. Okay, because ayaw nyo matulog kayo or maiwan yung pera nyo sa consolidation na abutin ng buwan, sham-sham, bago makapunta yung price from an area of support to an area of resistance. Okay. Hindi mag-heart, masusunog yung port. <laughs> Shout out sa mentor ko, Boss Charles Lim. Okay, one of the people that have uh, made trading much more efficient okay, and clearer for me. Okay, so Boss Charles Lim. Hello, good evening, sir. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, so malinaw na, no? Swing trade in a range. Next is, you could do swing trades in an in an uptrend. Ito na. <coughs> so, swing traders, okay. Ako, one of the things that I really like about swing trading is, okay, one of the things that I really like about swing trading is, hindi ka mafofomo. Kasi, yung trading style mo, is doesn't isn't involved with trying to get in on the move pag umaangat yung stock typically swing traders we want it when the market is red or sorry when the stock is red or is headed lower maganda para sa atin as swing traders or swing traders when the market is moving lower so kunyari ako ha, when when i see a trade kunyari uh, NRCP di ba nag break out your NRCP Felix or PX, diba? Made a huge rally. Okay. Okay, made a huge rally. Pero, most traders, ako, when I was starting out, excited ako nun lagi pag may nakakita ako ng top gainer. PX, up 10%. Yan, excited na ako. Titignan ko na yung chart. Hanapin ko na, hanapan ko na, teka, saan ba maganda? Drawing ko ng isda, ng triangle, ng kung anong uh, kutsara, palayok. Okay, gagawin ko ng ano, ng rason para makapasok ako sa trade. And next thing I know, sa tuktok na ako nakabili. Okay, tuktok trading style, tuktok buy at buy at tuktok. Okay, usually ganun na nangyari nung nagsa-start ako. That's why I really got into swing trading. Um, kasi ako nung araw, boy FOMO ko eh. Pag uh, may mga kumikita or pag may mga stocks na nagli parang gusto ko may giggle factor, eh. gusto ko lagi nandoon ako. Pero um, when I got into swing trading, wala akong choice. Kasi swing trading doesn't involve you going after breakouts. It involves you waiting for the stock to move back at areas of support. And that's where you get in. So, oy, bullish tilapia. Okay. Uh, signature pattern yan ng, uh, from one of my students. No? Yung mga favorite pattern niya. Sir Marix. Sir Marix, wag nandiyan ka. Um, bullish tilapia daw. Anyway, going back. For swing trades in an uptrend, you do not need to get into breakouts. Obviously, swing trades focus on bounces and reversals. Whenever a stock is in an uptrend, your focus, whenever you're doing swing trade, is to wait for the stock to do what we call a pullback or retracement. Meaning, as the stock is moving higher, once it hits an area of resistance, there is a likely chance... Okay, that it will move back. Okay, or move back towards an area of resistance. Kasi always remember this guys. Walang stock na parang uh, elevator na lahat na nakikita nyong kandila eh, puro bullish. Okay, one way or another, it has to do a pullback, find an area of support so that it would get more liquidity in, it would get more buyers in, it would facilitate more trades. So, 
Usually, di ba nakita nyo yung ECP last year, 2017, late 2017, late 2018. Tuloy-tuloy, green candles. Na-sustain yung trend? Oo, hindi. Di ba hindi na-sustain? Because um, for stocks to you know trend properly, they would need to do pullbacks. And usually, for swing traders, our job is to get in when the stock has reversed. Okay? Did a retracement, did a pullback, bumalik. Okay, may pagbalik moves. Okay, sa area of uh, support. Okay, so yun ang ano ang uh, usually ang focus ng swing traders. You buy on bounces at a huge areas of support. Hindi ko na okay, hindi ko na fo-focus yung ano ha, yung uh, differences ng support at resistance. Kung gusto nyo, okay, I have a huge a huge uh, I have a really nice talk, really detailed talk. I'll be in Later na lang. Okay, pero I will be discussing um, support and resistance soon. I hope to see you guys there. But again, okay, for swing trade in an upturn, it's all about buying on huge areas of support. Wait for the pullback. Get in at previous swing highs. Get in at, uh, at previous areas of resistance. Okay, and that's where you get in. Okay, usually when a stock rallies, pag nag-break yan, okay, yung dating resistance, nagiging area of support yan. So typically, that's where you want to get in. Indicator that I use for volatility, nag-iisa lang, that's ATR. Okay, I use the ATR. Okay, um, so for buying, for entries, okay, you buy on support. Okay, on selling, you sell at the succeeding areas of resistance. If the stock has done a pullback, okay, you bought at support and the stock rallies further, your selling would be at the succeeding areas of resistance. Okay, here or there, you either would sell whole or sell tranche. In tranches, but your goal is to, as the stock is moving higher and pag nag pullback na siya, is to identify areas of support. Mga dating swing highs, pivotal areas for the stock, okay, areas where the stock has found support, and use that as the areas where you get in for bounces. Okay, so, yon. Muntik na magka-sleepage. Okay, so there's that, guys. No, um, What's critical, okay, if dito sa range, importante yung size ng range and yung volatility. For trading an uptrend, okay, one thing that's very, very crucial here is the quality of the support. Okay? Maraming pwede nating i-plot na levels. Okay? Pwede kang mag-identify ng le levels or support kung saan-saan lang. Pero you need to have a way to identify good areas of support para when you get in on that trade, you have an edge. Okay, and um, yes, I'll be discussing that soon. Okay, uh, so there's that. Number one crit that's very, very critical is you need to identify properly the area of support. Then the area of support that you are getting in needs to be really good. Okay, so there is that. It's very straightforward, you know. Uh, when you get into a swing trade and an uptrend, okay, it really is for me. It, it's really good because it, um, it it taught me patience, okay. Okay, nung araw kasi talagang habul lang tayo ng habul sa mga trades. Pero wala akong choice kasi I wanted to focus on swing trading, and um, the things that I was doing had to align with focusing on waiting. For a stock to retrace, do a pullback, and that's where I typically get in on the trade. Okay, what we usually call a flip. Okay, previous area of resistance becoming a, an area of support. So that's how you trade swing trades in an uptrend. Typically, for both of these, whenever you trade a range, whenever you trade in an uptrend, it's just bounces. You could also do reversals, but we'll talk about reversals later. Lastly... Okay, so we focused on, we talked about sideways, how to trade swing trades um, in, a, in a sideways trend or in a range. How to trade swing trades in an uptrend. Last is how to do swing trades in a downtrend. So typically, okay, um, this is one of the hardest actually. Uh, for me, if I'm to distinctly, uh, if I were to specify yung mga type of swing trades that I did if I did a swing trade in a range if I did a swing trade in a in 
an uptrend. Pinaka profitable para sa akin is this second one, swing trade in an uptrend. Over the past uh, three years that I have been focusing on swing trades, ito yung pinaka uh, profitable. One of the hardest for me is swing trade in a downtrend. Okay, but this is for me um, also okay. It's also a type of swing trade that you could focus on, but um, it will be ma much more challenging. Okay, because you cannot simply do bounces all the time here. Okay, the goal whenever you're doing swing trades in a downtrend is to do or enter reversals. Okay, reversals, reversal ng short term or intraday trends. So, we typically do that when the stock is at an oversold period. When the stock, whether you're using RSI, whether you're using CSI, sorry, CCI, whether you're using MACD, whether you're using stochastics, when the stock hits an area of oversold, that's typically when the stock is in a downtrend. That's typically the time uh, it would be ideal for you to get in on a swing trade. But in terms of execution, I'd say this is the hardest. This is the most challenging, but okay, it's a bit more uh, advanced na when you could kasi mix two trading styles. One of the things that I teach is how to mix swing trading and position trading as well as how to mix swing trading with trend following. Um, lagari, okay, doing two trades or combining two trades all together, doing a swing trade which could eventually lead into a trend follow trade or a position trade. But that's a topic for another day. This is the hardest, but it could be the most rewarding of all, especially if you get in at a period where in the stock, the long-term trend of the stock would reverse. For those who got into the PX trade, okay, who were able to bottom fish or were able to get in on the uh, swing low, okay, yung pinaka bottom end ng most recent, pinaka most bottom end ng recent downtrend, okay, that's really really profitable for him. So. Kudos to those guys. Um, late na ako nakapasok sa PX. Okay, and a couple of things that I was doing. But yes, okay, for downtrends, the key is to get in on reversals. Okay, get in on reversals during oversold periods. Uh, trace resistance lang ang selling indicator. Yes, um, yes. Predominantly ako, I do not focus on other indicators when I'm selling. Okay, momentum traders probably would want to focus on their momentum when they're selling. For me, it's all about the range. It's all about support and assistance. It's all about price action as well as liquidity and order flow when I'm doing swing trading. Okay, that for me is the tools of the trade when I'm doing swing trade. Going back in a downtrend, yes, it's ideally best to enter reversals during oversold periods. Pero kanina pa ako reversals tang reversals, kanina pa ako bounce ng bounce, no? Uh, and for some people, it might be hard to understand. So let's explain it. Okay, let's take a look at the difference between a bounce and a reversal. You see, when you're doing swing trading, you could do two types of setups. Pwede kang mag-buy sa bounce. You could also buy at reversals. Bounce is best for range. For me, when you're buying, uh, when you're getting in a swing trade in a range, pinakamaganda is a bounce. I never really do reversals on a range unless it's really, really big that would warrant me to do reversals. But typically for uh, swing trades in a range, when the market or when the stock is trading sideways, the best yung bounces. Now for an uptrend and for downtrends, reversals are okay. Reversals would be good. Bounces are okay as well for uptrends. Pero definitively for stocks that are downtrend, okay, reversal ang pinakamaganda. Okay, so for range, pinakamaganda is bounces. For um, for downtrends, pinakamaganda when swing trading is to focus on reversals. Okay, and for um, uptrends, you could use actually both. Okay, how to spot fake reversal pa pala? How do you mitigate that? Um, how do I spot trend reversals? Well, trend reversals, you do not spot them really. You do not just spot them you anticipate you could identify where it most likely would happen okay but reversals usually look like this okay i'll explain it okay so what's the difference between a bounce and a reversal a bounce looks like this okay this is a bounce okay a bounce whenever you do a bounce trade the trade happens at the level this is the level right here the hot dog is the level 
Okay, that's where the, the trade takes place. Ito yung support, yung hotdog. Okay, the trade takes place here on this red line here. Okay, that's where the trade happens. Bounce. Okay, um, and, uh, profile picture of one of my best students. Okay, 2018, Mr. McAnderby. Okay, from, uh, from Bahrain. Okay, so there we go. The trade happens at the area of support, okay, for bounces. Now, for reversals, the trade happens after the bounce has already taken place. It usually, um, for reversal setups, it usually, okay, uh, is done halfway here, okay? So, it would look like this, okay? This is a bounce, okay? The trade takes place at the area of support, okay? Reversals. The trade takes place where? After the bounce has happened. So, it reversals typically look like a letter V. Okay, so there's that. Okay. So, bounces, okay? Trades happen at the area of support, the hot dog. Okay, as an, as an illustration here. For reversals, the trade happens after the bounce has already taken place. Okay. So it looks like this, okay? The bounce happens here, the reversals happen uh, there. Okay, sir, for buying signal, you wait for the green candle or the bounce candle. I won't focus on executions as well as um, <coughs> exact signals. But yes, of course, we buy in the green, okay? Uh, I know, for reversals, yes, you buy in the green. For bounces, no, you, you do not really wait for green candle. You take your trade at the area of support. Okay? So, magkaiba siya. When you're, whenever you're doing bounces, the trade happens here. Reversal, you typically wait for confirmation. Price action, ang number one confirmation ng reversal. Okay? Bounces, you don't need to wait for confirmation. Okay? You wait. Some traders would like to have confirmation. Like, some traders would wait for the stock to uh, have an oversold signal. Okay, or um, certain things that they want to see, so order flow. I have a couple of things that I'm looking at. But for me, for bounces, it's very straightforward. The quality of the area of support is what's most important. Okay, the quality of the area of support is what matters most. So there's that. Okay, so for bounces, you don't need that much. Okay, reversals, yes, you need a lot. You need you don't need a lot, but you need confirmation. You need to wait for the price to reverse. Kaya nga siya reversal. Eh. Okay. For bounces, no. You don't need to wait for this to do the bounce. Kasi tapos na yung bounce pag nag-bounce na siya. Okay. You take your trade, okay, at the level. Alright. So, it's called a blind touch. Okay. Uh, what I usually call it. You leave your order at the area of support and dasal dasal na lang charot hindi um you know the quality of the trade sorry the quality of the support will allow you okay na hindi mo na kailangan magdasal kasi you already have an edge when you are taking a trade at a uh, at a good area of support okay for bounces no you, we don't pray okay we just plot our levels properly and take our trades at good areas of support no need to pray Okay, but if you want to pray, of course, go ahead, do it. All right, but yes, for reversals, the bounce needs to happen first. The letter V, this is like price action, no? Movement, no bounce, no? Trade, trade takes place at the level. For reversals, the trade takes place after the bounce. Once there has been a reversal, a move, letter V. Okay, may pag letter V moves. Okay, so there is uh, that. Men who use charot is hard. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, because I have lots of, ano, lots of uh, friends na from all uh, shades and colors of the rainbow. So, we're going to be Okay, questions, guys. Okay, do you guys have any questions? Okay, now is the time for questions. Okay, um, I will be accommodating questions for roughly around 10 minutes. <coughs> yes, questions, guys. Questions, questions. Questions? Any questions? Uh, questions? 
so dapat solid and support but before buying for bonds. Yes, you need to be able to plot your support levels properly because if you don't plot the levels properly, kasi when it comes to bounces, um, you do not just you know buy a stock when it's on the red or when it's moving lower. Okay, so you have to identify a area of support where liquidity is strong and where the stock most likely would reverse. So there's that. How do I identify the quality of support and resistance? Yon, juicy. <laughs> How do you identify the quality of support and resistance? I will be talking about this uh, in uh, my talk, the TRX Forum. Yes, I will be a speaker in TRX Forum this coming February 9? Is it 9, 19? Yes, I'll be there. I'll be talking about liquidity, support and assistance, how to plot them, how to identify them, how to use them to help you become, you know, more efficient, to help you uh, become more efficient with the way that you trade. Uh, catch me there. Ano rate mo gamit sa ATR default? I pretty much just use the default sa ATR. Um, when do you decide to take a break-even trade? Ay, maganda yun. Ha? Okay. As a swing trader, um, it's... Medyo nanto, risk management, but that's okay. Um, there's what we call revolving risk. Okay, what the moment that you're in a trade and the moment that you're already in profit, Sir Richard, yung risk mo is nagbabago. Okay, because you already have money in the bank. Kunyari, ah, you took a trade at 2 pesos, the stock is already at 205. Tanggalin na lang muna natin yung commissions and, you know, uh, trading fees, broker fees, the whole lot. Let's say you bought a stock at 2 pesos, a good decent area of support, Vitarich, okay, moving lower, hits an area of support at 2 pesos, and then it hits 2.10. Okay, so that means, tanggalin muna natin yung commission sa, let's just assume, hypothetically, that you are up 10 cents. So that means that's how much? You're already up 5%, okay? So the moment that you're already up a certain amount, your risk is already inflated. Lumalaki yung risk mo the more into profit that you are. And the moment, uh, especially when you're not yet moving your stop. So kunyari ha, kung 2 pesos ang entry mo, tapos yung uh, stop placement mo is at say 198, 197, or let's say it's at 195. Okay, and you're already, uh, the stock's already at 2.10 or 2.10. Okay, um... You're already risking, okay, a part or your your profit if sa two uh, if sa one ninety five ka palang magkakat. So um, whenever I decide to take a break even trade, I actually rarely do break even trades. I usually um, still get out the small profit. Majority or predominantly um, of my uh, day trades, particularly involving bounces, sa reversals, swing day trades, okay. Uh, usually, small profits ang bigayan. So, ayun. Hindi <laughs> yung sinasabi ko matin kayo ng TRX Forum, pero ganun na nga. Okay, so there is that. Uh, totoo ba yun? After a 3 big raid lang, Candice most likely mag-reverse? No! Okay. Um, <coughs> guys, tandaan nyo, when it comes to trading, you have to put everything into context. Okay? Just because... Okay, may nagsabi na yung palayok pattern, okay, certain pattern works, or say, if the if a stock has three red candles, it works. Doesn't mean that it's gonna work all the time. Okay, there's a certain edge towards certain setups, towards various trading styles. So, I wouldn't say that's true. Okay, I've seen lots of red candles, three red candles. Sometimes it gets followed by an even bigger red candle. Okay, so it's context, okay? The way I see trading, the way I see it, it's all about, it's like you being a detective. Okay, you have all these clues, you have all these things that you could look at. You're looking at price action, you're looking at the trend, you're looking at support resistance, you're looking at the momentum, the volatility. You're looking at the whole market in general and what the stock is currently doing. Okay, and from there, you get to identify what the stock is most likely going to do. Okay, hindi ka manguhula. Pero you identify variables. Like a chess player. Diba? If someone, um, ang certain uh, move niya, first five moves niya is tinulak niya yung mga pawns niya towards a certain way, nilabas niya yung kabayo, nilabas niya yung bishop. Okay? Professional chess players identify certain scenarios that could happen. Okay? Okay, this bishop could do this, that, that horse could do this. Okay? Kunyari, a football player. If... An enemy team attacks 
at a certain direction. If nagpasa sila ng bola sa malayo and malapit na sa goal, and there are certain players at certain places, there are possibilities, certain scenarios that would happen. And really, when it comes down to anything that is being done professionally, whether that's sports, whether that's through trading, it's not about guessing what's gonna happen next. It's about being able to identify kung ano yung mga bagay na pwedeng manyare in the future, like uh, a couple of scenarios that most likely would happen, and being able to react, to take opportunities, to um, prioritize your risk management, to protect your capital whenever they do happen. Okay, volume, sir. Does it help identify the buying signal for swing trades? Uh, depends. Depends on what you're looking at. Volume is ideally good for something else. Pero ako, um, volume is just secondary. What I predominantly focus on is the quality of the area of support for entries. Uh, for entries. Okay, for buying, okay, I predominantly focus at areas of support as well as price action and order flow. Okay, so yun yung mga yun. Okay. May effect po ba yung stock indexes sa pagtitrade niya? Oo naman. Oo. Always. Okay. Uh, isa sa mga mali ko when I was starting out was just ignoring the index. Ano ba yung index? Diba? Nakikita ko lang nasa ano yun eh. Nasa, nasa Bloomberg. Okay. Lumalabas sa sa ano sa ABS. Diba? Pinapakita. Okay. Up ng 2% yung index today. Ano ba yun? <laughs> no araw, di ko pinapansin yun. Pero in reality, the index is like it's the drum beat of the market okay the index is composed of the 20 or oh, 20 20 the um the biggest okay the blue chips okay the biggest companies in uh the market okay the biggest in terms of value in terms of liquidity so majority of all transactions lahat ng pera na lumalabas pasok madalas pasok sa index majority if not most at certain days so, it reflects, okay, whether or not papasok o palabas yung pera. Obviously, alam naman natin, iba, pag bear market, if the index is moving lower, or the trend of the index is moving lower, obviously, palabas yung pera. Alanganin mag-breakouts. I mean, although breakouts are fine, if the market's moving lower, but you have to be more selective. Similarly, if the market is doing good, if the index is doing good, you also have to put that into consideration since, you know, there would be lots of opportunities for breakout plays, continuation moves, etc. Okay. What if hindi mahit yung resistance? You set trail stop? No, I don't do trail stops. I never do trail stops for um for um swing trades. Okay. I typically have uh use price action that I, I look for certain price action when I sell. Either that happens or my ATP gets hit or my stop gets hit. Do you use test buy for swing trade? No, I never do test buy. I either I buy when I need to buy. Okay, I don't do test buy. Do you have time stop? No, I never do time stops because typically the stocks that I enter have volatility and have momentum already. Uh, when a stock has strong volatility and momentum, bihira kang matetenga. Okay, not unless uh, all of a sudden it trades sideways. That happens, pero that only should be taken into consideration if um, um, if you have a uh, trend follow trade. Swing trades, yeah, you probably would need a time stop, okay? Pero for the most part, it rarely happens na natatenga yung pera ko when I'm on a swing trade. So, not that much. And I don't focus. Do you use time stops pag di ko magalang hawak mo? Nah. Very rarely do I do. Pero, you know, for me, the 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 decision when I, when I need to get out pag hindi ko magalaw yung stock, it's discretionary on my part. Okay, I don't have a specific system that caters to time stops. Okay. Kasi, for the most part, I always focus on screening my stocks properly. If tama yung screening mo, if tama yung entry mo, bihirang matitenga yung pera mo when it comes to your entries. Pwede ba mag-buy on tranches swing trading? Yes, Mr. Rodolfo. Uh, yes, it is possible. Um, levels, okay, support. Uh, could not just be exact areas in price it could also be multiple levels so for swing trades yes you could do it predominantly for uh, ranges you could also do that malalaki pag malalaki yung range yes you could do that you could do tranches um, 
Ako, although for me, I predominantly just buy one time, big time, just one tranche uh, for my swing trades. I more mostly use tranches when I do trend follow, okay, position trades. What is your stop loss after entering the position before you say na false bounce or false reversal? Um, what is my stop loss? My wh ano ba? Where is my stop loss? Or ganon kalakay ng stop loss ko? Um, stop loss placement usually it's under, okay? It's either under my entry or if I really want, if depends eh, depends on the risk and reward, okay? I I adjust it uh, that way. But for the most part, I usually have my stops uh, at an area of support that is under under the area of support that is under my entry price. Um, yes, I have other setups. I also trade breakouts. But the way I see it, tatlo lang naman yung mga setups. Eh. There's breakouts, there's bounces, there's reversals. Everything else is of a variation. May time stop ba pag naniligaw? Haha! <laughs> Ewan ko. Hindi <laughs> ko alam. How to know volatility of a stock? Uh, volatility is totally a different matter. Um, but yeah, you could use ATR for that. Paano kayo nag-decide na mag-switch na sa TF from swing? Ah, that's a good question. That's a topic for another day. Okay. Do you use multiple time frame during market hours or just purely price action? There we go. Um... I only use multiple time frames when I'm planning. During market hours, ni na ako masadot tumititig sa charts. I only look at quotes. Okay, yah. If you're using Timson, yung quotes na Timson, I use that. Okay, yah. Mayroon tayong mga six stocks that we predominantly focus on, or we have a watch list sa investor. Though you know, we just pretty much refresh, refresh, refresh. Um, or you know, if you depending on your broker, like for me, I use FM Sec as well, or First Metro Sec. Uh, they have the option to have multiple watch lists. I mainly focus on the movement of price. Okay, hindi na kasi, for me, ah, the only time that you really need to... Kasi there are traders that like during market hours to have charts. Ako, I do not like it. I used to do that. Okay, pero there are some traders that are better. Okay, that are better with charts. Ako, I'm better with seeing price. Kasi I already have planned for it. I already know where areas of liquidity would be strong at areas of resistance or support, etc. So, depende. It's a matter of preference. Pero ako, I don't use charts during market hours. Silip. Yes, okay. Pag may mga bagong moves, okay, na advanced na pwede natin pagplanuhan for the next day. Pero no, I don't focus on charts during market hours. Market rotation. Paano po malalaman kung saan ang mga traders? Any ideas? Huh. Uh, well, it would be obvious, okay, to where the money is at. If you take a look at the most active stocks, okay, you would pretty much see it there, as well as um, how the index is doing. Okay, there's a different thing for that. Okay, so that's it, guys. A quick recap of the stuff that we discussed tonight. Okay, number one, yes, your goals, <coughs> your goals are important. Because your goals determine your trading style, okay? Your goals determine your trading style. Hindi kung you know, kung anong trip mong gawin today. No, but your goals do, okay? So your trading style has to be well attached to your goals in trading. Next, your um, what all about swing trading? Swing trading is pretty much buying low, selling high. You buy at the lows, you sell at highs. So you buy at support, you sell at resistance. No, I don't use trend lines, by the way. Okay. Next, uh, swing trade in a range. Okay, differences for swing trades. Swing trade in a range. Okay, you buy on the range support, you sell on range resistance. Okay, so that's how it works. Uh, swing trade in an uptrend. Yes, you buy in support, you sell on succeeding areas of resistance. Okay, you either would sell on tranches on the way up, especially if it's on an uptrend. You could do that, or you could sell at the next area of resistance. For swing trade, okay, swing trades in a downtrend, you buy on reversals during oversold periods, okay. Um, this is a pretty lengthy topic, okay, but I will do that another day. For bounces, you trade at the level, okay. For reversals, you trade after the bounce. Okay, so there's that. Alright. 
Okay, so that's it for tonight, guys. Um, it's a very quick webinar. I hope you guys learned a lot. Okay, for showing, um, just to clarify things out. Okay, ginawa ko lang naman talagin para mabawasan yung questions about swing trading. Hindi, joke lang, charot. Uh, I want you guys to have a better understanding of how we do things and how swing trading works. Uh, 